Another tidbit of science news that I came across recently that applies to A-level biology is looking at carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and we can see that the trends are going up and up and up. I think two years ago was the first year that carbon dioxide levels did not drop below 400 parts per million. There's a seasonality to the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, basically based upon northern hemisphere, there's more land where plants grow than in the southern hemisphere. So the northern hemisphere summer that has more photosynthesis because there's more plants growing in the northern hemisphere summer than there are in the southern hemisphere summer, which means more carbon dioxide is sucked in to the uh, from the atmosphere into plants during the northern hemisphere summer. And normally that sucks carbon dioxide levels down just below 400 parts per million. It goes up again in the southern hemisphere summer and so on and so forth. But last year or the year before was the first year ever that carbon dioxide levels did not dip below the 400 parts per, mi parts per million threshold. Now, what we're looking at to try and model the future is looking at possible scenarios and the worst case possible scenario is something like 550 parts per million carbon dioxide by 2050, one of the worst case scenario predictions. And so there's an Irish university that have basically got the climate controlled rooms, control the light, control the temperature, and they can control the atmospheric gas in there, the ratios of carbon dioxide to oxygen, all the rest of things. So they can manipulate it, say, if the future projection is 550 parts per million, what will, how will plants respond? Well, we can use our A-level biology knowledge here. If there's more CO2 in the atmosphere, that's what's used for the light independent reaction for Calvin cycle and stomata. This is all about stomatal counting. So if you have a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, you need fewer stomata to get the same amount of CO2 into the plant for light independent reaction. Now, the trade-off, the stomata open to allow CO2 in, Okay, the oxygen comes out as well, but the, the H2O is going to come out through transpiration, and that's a negative for the plant. There's a trade-off for opening up to allow carbon dioxide in, is that you let water vapor escape. So when there's higher carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the plants can respond by having fewer stomata. They can get the same amount of CO2 by having fewer stomata, and therefore less water vapor escapes. Now, in rainforests, Rainforests basically create their own rain. The transpiration is so much. All the water vapor coming out of the plants condenses in the atmosphere, forms the clouds, and then re-rains down upon the, the rainforest. They've found species or fossilized imprints of leaves from 200 million years ago, ginkgo, ginkgo boboa trees. So you need the same species, basically, that's still alive today, and you find a fossilized plant of the same species from 200 million years ago, and you count the stomata. Now the stomata on the ginkgo baboas of today have um, between 90 and 100 stomata per unit area. I can't remember, small unit area, they're pretty closely together. But if you look at the same species of plant going back, leaf shape is the same, very much highly conserved. These were around when the di herbivorous dinosaurs could have been munching on the neighboring leaf to this leaf that was fossilized for all we know. But 200 million years ago, stomatal counts were 30 to 40, I think, per same unit area. So that was just carbon dioxide levels were much higher, three to four times higher then than they are now. But this is gonna have all sorts of ramifications on, now that we know that carbon dioxide is going up again, we're gonna probably move towards a similar pattern to what when CO2 was much higher in the atmosphere 200 million years ago. And this is gonna have all sorts of unknown consequences on the, maybe onto the amount of transpiration, the amount of clouds that are formed, the amount of rainfall that falls. There's basically all sorts of things. But what we do know is that plants will respond by changing their stomatal density in response to atmospheric carbon dioxide. This is not gonna take place over one generation. It's gonna take place over many generations, but it, plants will adapt. They don't want to lose water. They want the fewest number of stomata they possibly can to still get enough CO2 in order for them to do light independent reaction. So super interesting. Again, if you do want more detail, check out the recording. Um, there's loads of other bits in that particular episode that are completely relatable to A-level biology. Um, there's so much interesting stuff going on out there. I just want to share some of it with you. Let me know what your comments are. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think of the toolkit videos.